Earth has seen extinction hit 70% of all life in a single day and survived frozen ages that drained oceans by 400 feet. But science now predicts that disasters of even greater scale are inevitable. The most terrifying predictions for the end of Earth aren't science fiction. They chart a timeline from cosmic impacts to total planetary takeover. What will end life here first? The next asteroid, a new ice age, or something far worse? A six-mile-wide asteroid hurtled toward what is now Mexico 66 million years ago, striking with the force of over 100 million megatons of TNT. The impact instantly vaporized everything for hundreds of miles and sent shockwaves racing around the globe. Within hours, earthquakes and tsunamis battered distant coastlines and sent shockwaves racing around the globe. Within hours, earthquakes and tsunamis battered distant coastlines. Billions of tons of dust and sulfur shot into the sky, blocking sunlight for months. Photosynthesis collapsed, temperatures plunged, and food webs unraveled. In a geological blink, about 70% of all species vanished, including the dinosaurs. Events like this are rare, but not impossible. Statistically, a Chicxulub scale impact occurs once every 100 million years. Smaller asteroids strike more often, as the 2013 Chelyabinsk airburst in Russia reminded the world, arriving with no warning, injuring over 1,500 people. Despite new detection programs, only about half of potentially city-destroying asteroids have been found. According to planetary scientist Dr. Lindley Johnson, our current survey is far from complete. The risk of missing the next big one is very real. Earth's deep freeze arrives not with a single blow, but through the slow turning of cosmic gears. The planet's orbit stretches and contracts every 100,000 years, tilts back and forth over 41,000 years, and wobbles like a spinning top on cycles of about 23,000 years. These changes, known as Milankovitch cycles, quietly control how much sunlight reaches the high northern latitudes, setting the stage for the growth or retreat of massive ice sheets. Ice core records and layers of ocean mud reveal a repeating pattern. When summer sunlight at 65 degrees north drops low enough, glaciers begin their relentless advance. Models suggest that, if left to natural rhythms, the next major ice age could begin in about 30,000 years. When it comes, ice will cover much of North America, Europe, and Asia and sea levels could fall by as much as 400 feet as water locks away in miles-thick ice. Yet, some experts caution that rising greenhouse gases might delay this timeline by tens of thousands of years. As paleoclimatologist Dr. Andre Berger notes, orbital cycles set the tempo, but today, human activity holds the baton. As glaciers advance and sea levels collapse, the world's habitable land shrinks to a narrow belt hugging the equator. Billions face a stark choice, move or perish. Agricultural heartlands freeze, cities vanish beneath ice, and migration corridors clog with desperate travelers. The few remaining temperate zones, scattered across Central Africa, Southeast Asia, and parts of South America, strain under the weight of humanity. Food production plummets as arable land disappears and water grows scarce. Demographer Dr. Elena Rathman describes the scenario. Our models show that, in a full glacial maximum, the planet could support less than a tenth of today's population. The rest would be swept away by famine, cold, and conflict. Ancient Ice Age refuges, once home to small bands of hunter-gatherers, now struggle to shelter billions. Disease, resource wars, and social breakdown become daily threats. The scale of loss is almost unimaginable. A world where survival depends on finding a patch of ground that the ice has not claimed. 250 million years from now, the continents will drift together, assembling into a new supercontinent. Africa will press northward, colliding with Eurasia and closing off the Mediterranean. Antarctica and Australia will merge, anchoring a vast southern landmass. As these colossal plates grind together, mountain ranges will rise and coastlines will vanish. The world map will be almost unrecognizable, a single, sprawling land ringed by a super-ocean. In the heart of this giant continent, the climate will turn brutal. With so much land so far from the sea, moisture won't reach the interior. Rainfall collapses, and what was once forest or grassland becomes scorched desert. Temperatures soar and rivers dry up. The interior stretches for thousands of miles, cut off from ocean breezes, 
locked in cycles of drought and heat. Dr. Ross Mitchell, a leading tectonicist, describes it this way. The supercontinent center will be an arid wasteland, inhospitable to most life. Only the fringes, where land meets the sea, will offer any relief. For life on land, the age of lush continents will be over, replaced by dust, heat, and a struggle for survival. Massive volcanic eruptions can trigger a different kind of planetary crisis, one that starts in the oceans. Around 252 million years ago, the end Permian event, known as the Great Dying, saw up to 96% of marine species vanish. The cause? Colossal pulses of carbon dioxide from volcanic provinces like the Siberian Traps. These eruptions flooded the atmosphere with tens of thousands of gigatons of carbon dioxide, acidifying the oceans and stripping away oxygen. Core samples from ancient seabeds reveal a sudden drop in pH and a collapse of carbonate shell building, especially among brachiopods. These creatures, once abundant, proved highly vulnerable as their shells dissolved and their habitats disappeared. Fossil records show fewer than 5% survived the boundary. The devastation didn't stop there. As continents merged into a supercontinent, shallow coastal seas shrank by as much as 70%, erasing breeding grounds and refuges for marine life. According to marine biologist Dr. Lila Tron, acidification and habitat loss combined to wipe out nearly all complex ocean life, an extinction reset for the biosphere. The oceans, once teeming with life, became a graveyard of lost diversity setting the stage for a new and harsher world. A billion years from now, sunlight will grow more intense as the sun slowly brightens, driving Earth's average temperature to between 86 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. At first glance, these numbers may not seem extreme, but for most of the planet's plants and animals, they spell disaster. Even the hardiest trees and crops, reliant on a delicate balance of temperature and carbon dioxide, will be pushed beyond their limits. As the planet heats up, weathering reactions in rocks accelerate, pulling carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Once carbon dioxide drops below about 10 parts per million, photosynthesis falters. Nearly 95% of all land plants, including forests and grasslands, will vanish. Without plants, food chains unravel. Herbivores lose their only food source, and predators follow close behind. Pollinators, soil microbes, and entire ecosystems collapse in rapid succession. Deserts spread across continents, and the last remnants of complex life disappear from the land. While the oceans will offer a brief sanctuary for some microorganisms, the age of forests, animals, and green landscapes draws to a close. The world becomes a place of empty heat, stripped of the life it once sustained. Long after forests have vanished and animals are gone, the last traces of life cling to existence in the planet's shrinking salt lakes and evaporating oceans. Halophiles, microbes adapted to thrive in extreme salinity, endure conditions that would destroy all other forms of life. Some survive for millions of years sealed inside crystals of solid salt, waiting out drought and radiation. In the words of extremophile microbiologist Dr. Priya Nair, these organisms are the ultimate survivors, but even they have their limits. Above 224 degrees Fahrenheit, the chemistry of life itself breaks down. As the sun's output continues to climb, surface temperatures rise past this critical threshold between 1.4 and 1.6 billion years from now. Ocean water boils away, and the last microbial communities are sterilized by heat. Earth, once a cradle of life, becomes a barren world. But the story does not end there. In the distant future, between 7 and 12 billion years from today, the sun swells into a red giant. Its outer layers expand, swallowing the inner planets. Earth's surface temperature soars above 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Mountains melt. Oceans and continents vaporize. The planet itself is reduced to a cloud of atoms, scattered into space, joining the raw material for new stars and worlds yet to form. A single asteroid impact 66 million years ago wiped out 70% of life on Earth, as documented in geological and fossil records. Today, scientists track thousands of near-Earth objects, yet acknowledge gaps in detection and prediction. The evidence shows that Earth's history is shaped by cycles of catastrophe, asteroid strikes, ice ages, supercontinent formation, 
and mass extinctions caused by volcanic carbon dioxide. Looking ahead, models project the sun's increasing heat will end all life within 1.6 billion years, with Earth itself likely consumed as the sun becomes a red giant in 7 to 12 billion years. Still, uncertainties remain. The precise timing of future impacts, the full resilience of microbial life, and the limits of planetary defense. All current evidence confirms that Earth's habitability is temporary, with each era defined by both survival and loss. The fate of our planet is not a matter of if, but when, written in stone, ice, and the light of our aging star.